In this video, we're gonna talk about seven points about the IDLE loans that you need to know. Now, I have one of the agreements for the IDLE loan right in front of me. So if you're considering getting the IDLE loan or already have the IDLE loan, then this video is for you and it's super important. But before we get into it, if this is your first time at our channel or you haven't subscribed, click on the subscribe button at the bottom. My name is Travis Sickle, certified financial planner, helping you reach your financial goals. Now I'm going to pull up on the screen in just a minute the actual loan application that you signed if you already have it or will sign if you accept the money from the SBA. Now this is the loan portion, not the advance. Now if you want to print this document or don't know where to find it, if you go back to your email, I'm going to pull it up on the screen. So it looks just like this and you can see the green button in the middle that says view your account. If you click on view your account, you can go to the SBA's website and then you're gonna to have to enter your username or email and then your password and then you're just gonna be able to sign right in and you'll be able to print it down. So I'll go ahead and log in just so you can see what it looks like. And then at the very bottom, you can look at review and sign closing documents. So if you've already signed them, you can click on view and then you can download the exact same PDF that I'm about to go through. So if you do wanna follow along, you can hit pause, go download your document and then you can follow along or I'm gonna pull it right up on the screen so we can look at it together. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to the first point that I wanna point out and that is the interest. The interest will accrue at a rate of 3.75% per annum and will accrue only on funds actually advanced from the dates of each advance. So what that means is, well, you don't have to make the payments for 12 months, the first payment for the first 12 months the interest still accrues. So if you got this loan and you are gonna hold on to it, thinking maybe you need it, and then you're just gonna give it back in six months, well, just note that the interest is accruing from the date that that money hits your bank account. And it's at a rate of 3.75%. Now that's not really that big of a deal because it is a relatively low interest rate, but I did want to point that out because a lot of people look at this thinking that they're not going to have any interest accruing for the first 12 months because those payments start in 12 months. But that is not true. Interest starts accruing the date that that money hits your bank account. And the second point that I want to talk about has to deal with the collateral. And it really looks to me like this is the biggest point of confusion for a lot of people getting the idle loans and that is the collateral now if your loan is under $25,000 you can see it right there it says for loan amounts of 25,000 or less the SBA is not taking a security interest in any collateral and that is a huge differentiating factor because if the loan is above $25,000 there are a lot more hurdles that you need to be aware of and what that means is if you wanna sell your office printer or a camera or anything that is owned by your business, you need to get the prior approval from the SBA. Now, if you wanna request this approval, an easy way to do it is to send an email and you can do that to disastercustomerservice at sba.gov. But if your loan is under $25,000, then this does not apply. And I called the SBA several times and none of the agents told me that the loans that were under $25,000 would have any issues about the assets. Now, above $25,000, sending that email, you're gonna to wanna to wait for that response to get the go ahead in order to do it. Now, I use the example of a camera or an office printer because those are relatively small dollar items relative to a larger loan, but they also told me that this is really only gonna come up if you get audited or default on the loan. And it also doesn't seem to be an issue if you're going out and replacing an old office printer with a new printer. But if you wanna be on the safe side, go ahead and email the SBA to get their prior approval before taking these actions. And this is the same with point three that I wanna point out on the application or the agreement if you scroll down to the requirements relative to collateral, it says it right here, where the borrower will not sell or transfer any collateral described in the collateral paragraph 
hear of without the prior written consent of the SBA. Now, that is only for above 25,000. And I did ask the SBA, I called them several times, and that is what is referring to. And this particular paragraph also references the one that says this is only for those loans that are greater than $25,000. And what the SBA agents did tell me, one agent told me that just don't let the business go belly up. And another one said, quote, final answer, it only applies to those businesses that have loans of above $25,000. So that was his final answer. And the other one said, don't go belly up. So they really just want you into the spirit of what's going on here. They want your business to survive. And the third agent that I spoke to did say that you can't sell the business, which totally makes sense. They don't want you just to sell the business and not pay off this loan. They want you to pay the loan back, but they also want the business to survive. Point number four, which I found pretty interesting, referred to you not being able to relocate your business. So it's right under here, under the section that says requirements for use of loan proceeds and receipts. And that second bullet says the borrower will not use directly or indirectly any portion of the proceeds of this loan to relocate. And I'm thinking that they're putting that in there because if you're in a disaster area, they don't want you to flee the disaster area. They want that area to be rebuilt. So that's why that clause is in there and preventing you from relocating before you pay off the loan. Now, if you wanna relocate, just have to pay off the loan first in order to do so. Same thing with selling your business. You have to make sure that the loan is paid off before you can sell your business. And point number five is very similar to the previous point where they want you not only to rebuild that area, they also want you to use all your resources to improve the country. So when feasible, they want you to purchase only American-made equipment and products with the proceeds of this loan. And that extend feasible still has to deal with the price. So even if you have two competing products that are identical, it's not saying that you have to buy the one that's more expensive, but if the prices are the same and the product is relatively the same, they want you to buy American-made. Point number six has to deal with the books and the records. So let's scroll down to that section right here and you can see the books and records section. And I thought this was pretty interesting because this might look like a lot more work than you might be used to, but it's gonna keep your books and records really organized or force you to keep them really organized, which will help you hopefully make better decisions with your business and even improve how you operate your business. So I don't look at this section necessarily as a burden. Well, you might feel like it's a little bit more work and they really wanna know everything about your business, which is true. They want the business to survive and they wanna have a good idea of where the business is going so they can manage their own books on whether or not you're gonna be able to pay this money back. And apparently that third bullet does say, borrower will furnish to SBA not later than three months following the expiration of the borrower's fiscal year and in such form as SBA may require, borrower's financial statements. So they wanna keep tabs on the health of your business. Now you might feel like that's an invasion of privacy, but you're still doing taxes, you're still giving them your information, they know how much money you're making, so this is just one more step that they're doing to ensure that you're gonna be able to pay this money back. And the last point, point number seven, has to deal with the limits on distribution of assets. Now, this section is on page five and you can see it, limits on distribution of assets. And it says, the borrower will not, without prior written consent of SBA, make any distributions of borrower's assets. Now, this also depends on the loan size and your business entity type, whether it's a sole proprietor, LLC, or S corporation. Now, with S corporations, if you have a distribution, that distribution, if your loan is under $25,000, doesn't apply because the loan is not collateralized. But if it's above $25,000, then it is collateralized, and therefore, you need the written consent to do a distribution from the SBA. But if it's below, then you don't have to get that written consent. And as it relates to LLCs and sole proprietors, your net profit, it doesn't appear that that is also something that's gonna get restricted because it's not an asset of the business. It's an asset of the owner or you as the individual. 
So if you're taking that net profit, that doesn't appear to be affected by this limits of distribution of the borrower's assets because the borrower is the business entity. Now, I know that there's a lot of debate on this and it is probably specifically worded to be very broad. And it really sounds to me like it only comes up on whether or not you get audited and are actually defaulting on this loan. So I did call the SBA several times and it did seem like they were very consistent with their answers, but that's not in writing. So I did email the SBA with all of these questions so we can have it written down and clarified on whether or not you can do all the things that I mentioned today, which I will put in future videos. And if you have any questions on any of these parts of the loan or even parts that I didn't talk about, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do them on future videos. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and leave your comments down at the bottom. Mm -hmm.